Welcome to the Barawan Branch Model Railway. Let's begin with a brief look at the entire Barawan diorama. It begins at the bridge. The diorama is about 4 meters long and between 400 and 500 millimeters wide. Barawan takes inspiration from a number of New South Wales country stations, most especially Oberon. Country stations tend to be uncrowded, quiet and spacious. To create the illusion of spaciousness, the diorama is divided into separate detailed scenes that include a per-way area, sheep paddock, silo area, the station and goods facilities, and houses that border the station. Visual rests between scenes enhance the illusion of space. Scenic effects are created by combining materials, textures and colors in convincing ways. Now let's look at each scene in detail. The first scene is a per-way area adjacent to the stock siding. The unsealed road through a cattle paddock leads to the per-way area. The cattle grid is a visually interesting alternative to a gate. Ground cover includes static grass, fine and coarse foam, fine leaf foliage, polyfiber and real dirt. The grid was scratch built in situ. Code 83 rail is used for the grid. The timber posts and rails are scale lumber. Plaster chips, stained black brown, represent cow pats on the road. The purway area includes a ganger's shed, rail rack, rusting drums, a lever frame, point rotting, catch point and indicator, as well as other items. Elsewhere the fireside consists of charred scale lumber, cinders and real ash. Sometimes plans don't come together. The Perway area was initially planned to be adjacent to the loco release at the other end of the diorama, but the space there proved too limited. The sheep paddock beyond the line adds variety, but it wasn't part of the original plan. The original plan to use HO scale cattle in the foreground and N scale cattle in the background failed to force perspective effectively. HO sheep are a better size and give visual variety between the foreground and background paddocks. Arranging the sheep in natural groupings such as use with lambs, walking, grazing, drinking, and resting, creates a convincing scene. Finely foliage, handmade trees, fine and coarse foams, and textured tree outlines on the back scene, aid the 3D to 2D transition. The dry gully is a visual break between the paddock and silo scenes. Fine leaf foliage and small trees help conceal the end of the silo siding. The silo and its siding occupy the corner of the diorama. The back scene could not be coved here, as it would have reduced the length of the siding. Trees and foliage conceal the back scene corner and silo road. Bare ground near the silo is fine foam and real dirt. The bright green grass between the rails represents sprouting seed that was spilt during grain loading. The silo is a commercial one-piece cast resin model. The shed and outdoor toilet were inspired by those at Ardlethan. They are scratch-built in styrene. A red-belly black snake heading into the dunny is a fun detail. The stock ramp and yards are scratch-built in situ with scale lumber. They are based on photos of the stock facilities at Oberon. The uncluttered space between the silo and the station provides a visual rest and enhances the illusion of space. The combined men's toilet and lamp shed is scratch-built in styrene. It is a modified version of the CC2 design. The men's toilet is 66 scale feet from the station platform as at Oberon. 
The platform is 250 scale feet long, the same as Oberon's. The PC3 station building is a commercial kit with added detail and weathering. The G1 goods shed is a craftsman kit. Corrugated metal sheet covers a substructure of thin ply. The board crossing is constructed of stained scale lumber. Old milk churns lie at the base of the shed. The goods shed sits on 3 mm diameter stumps. The discarded pallets are made of scale lumber. The yard crane is a kit build. The final scene encompasses houses that back onto the railway easement. The half-depth houses are scratch-built, in 3 mm to the foot scale, to reduce their physical impact within the scene. They are also on higher ground, to visually separate them from the railway easement. Trees, and foliage, are used to hide where the buildings meet the back scene. Shrubs of fine leaf foliage partially conceal the back scene. Flowering plants, made of colored foam glued to grass tufts, add interest. As do vegetables, represented by coarse foam glued on raised rows of fine dirt. Polyfiber, coarse foam and static grass represent roughage on the bank and along the fence line. Different fence types, clutter around the shed, and the untidy garden bed near the steps, Add character and visual interest without making the scene too busy. The rough yard suggests dry conditions. This house is not easily seen from the usual viewing position. Its primary purpose is to draw attention away from the back scene corner. Coving the back scene here would have reduced the length of the station tracks. The house is scratch built in styrene. The balcony railings, stairs, and horizontal buttons are made with scale lumber. Trees and low growth conceal the 3D 2D transition at the end of the diorama. The stops are scratch built with scale lumber. That completes the tour of the site. There's some fine level detailing to undertake before the diorama will be finished. That will include additional weathering, litter, and rubbish, and some wear and tear to a few items. There's perhaps room too, for a few more well-placed figures. Although when populating a rural scene, often, it is the case that less is more. Happy modeling.